Hi everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you just how important networking is for hackers. My name is Jasmine, and this channel is all about showing you how to become a highly paid cybersecurity, ethical hacking, or cloud pro fast. <laughs> Understanding network protocols is crucial because they are the backbone of how data is transmitted and received across networks. In the hacking world, this knowledge is essential. You can't effectively use tools like Wireshark or engage in any form of hacking work without a solid grasp of how network protocols function. In this video, we'll explore everything from IP addresses to TCP, UDP, ARP, DNS, and DHCP, by the end of this video, you'll have a strong understanding of how data moves across networks and how to leverage this knowledge in your hacking endeavors. Let's get started. To begin, let's talk about IP addresses. An internet protocol, IP address, is a unique identifier assigned to every device connected to a network. Think of it as your digital address that allows devices to find and communicate with each other across the internet. Without IP addresses, none of the online activities we take for granted, like emailing, video chatting, browsing, or streaming, would be possible. Essentially, an IP address is like the backbone of the internet. There are two types of IP addresses, public and private. Public IP addresses are unique and can be accessed over the internet, while private IP addresses are used within local area networks, LANs, and are not accessible from the internet. This distinction is important because there are only 4.3 billion possible IPv4 addresses, which is not enough to cover all devices globally. To manage this limitation, private IP addresses are reused within LANs, with common ranges starting with 192.168.something, 10.something.something.something, or 172.16.something.something. .something .something. However, devices with private IP addresses still need to communicate with the Internet. This is where network address translation, NAT, comes into play. NAT devices, like your home rotor, translate private IP addresses to a single public IP address, allowing multiple devices on a LAN to share the same public IP when accessing the Internet. This process is seamless and invisible to the user, yet it's a critical component of modern networking. Next, let's explore the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, or DHCP. DHCP is the protocol responsible for dynamically assigning IP addresses to devices on a network. Instead of having a fixed IP address, devices receive a new IP address each time they connect to a network. This dynamic allocation is particularly useful in networks with a limited number of available IP addresses, such as in a LAN. When a device connects to a network, it sends a request to the DHCP server asking for an IP address. The DHCP server responds by offering an available IP address, along with other network configuration details like the subnet mask, default gateway, and DNS servers. The device then accepts the offer, and the DHCP server assigns the IP address for a specific period known as a lease. This lease ensures that the IP address is only temporarily allocated, allowing the network to manage and optimize the use of available addresses efficiently. The DHCP process involves four key steps, discover, offer, request, and acknowledge. In the discover step, the device sends out a broadcast message to find a DHCP server. The server responds with an offer, proposing an IP address for the device. The device then sends a request to confirm its interest in the offered IP address. And finally, the server sends an acknowledge message, officially assigning the IP address. This entire process is crucial for the smooth operation of networks, ensuring that devices can quickly and efficiently connect without the need for manual IP address configuration. Now that we've covered IP addresses and DHCP, let's dive deeper into the Internet protocol itself. The Internet Protocol is the set of rules that govern how data packets are transmitted over a network. It works by breaking down data into smaller packets, which are then routed from the source to the destination. Each packet travels independently across the network, potentially taking different paths, and is reassembled into the original data once it reaches its destination. 
This includes fields like the version of IP being used, IPv4 or IPv6, the total length of the packet, the source and destination IP addresses, and the time to live, TTL, which indicates how long the packet can remain on the network before being discarded. Understanding these fields is crucial for anyone involved in cybersecurity or network analysis, as they provide valuable insights into how data is moving across the network and can help identify potential vulnerabilities. For example, the TTL field can reveal how many hops, or devices, a packet has passed through on its way to its destination. This information is often used in tracer route commands to map out the path a packet takes across the internet. Similarly, the source and destination IP addresses can help identify the origin and target of a data transmission, which is critical in network forensics and incident response. Another key component of networking is the Transmission Control Protocol TCP, and the User Datagram Protocol UDP. Both protocols operate on top of the Internet Protocol and are responsible for how data is sent and received across networks. However, they handle data transmission in different ways, each with its own advantages and disadvantages. TCP is a connection-oriented protocol, meaning that it establishes a connection between the sender and receiver before data is transmitted. This ensures that all data packets are delivered in the correct order and without errors. TCP is reliable but slower than UDP, making it ideal for applications where accuracy is more important than speed, such as file transfers, emails, and web browsing. On the other hand, UDP is a connectionless protocol. It sends data packets without establishing a connection, which makes it faster but less reliable than TCP. UDP doesn't guarantee that all packets will arrive or that they'll be in the correct order. However, this speed makes UDP ideal for applications where speed is critical and some data loss is acceptable, such as in live video streaming, online gaming, and voice over IP VOIP, services. Understanding the differences between TCP and UDP is crucial for anyone in hacking for example, certain types of network attacks, like SYN floods, exploit the connection-oriented nature of TCP, while others, like UDP floods, target the connectionless behavior of UDP. Knowing when and why to use each protocol can also help you optimize your hacking tools and techniques for different scenarios. Another important protocol to understand is the Address Resolution Protocol, ARP. ARP is used to map IP addresses to MAC, Media Access Control, addresses, which are unique identifiers assigned to network interfaces. When a device wants to communicate with another device on the same local network, it needs to know the MAC address of the destination device. ARP is the protocol that facilitates this translation. When a device knows the IP address of the destination but not the MAC address, it sends out an ARP request broadcast to the network asking, who has this IP address? The device with the corresponding IP address responds with its MAC address. The requesting device then stores this information in its ARP cache, allowing it to communicate directly with the destination device using its MAC address. However, ARP is not without its vulnerabilities. ARP spoofing, for example, is a technique used by attackers to associate their MAC address with the IP address of another device, such as the default gateway. This can allow the attacker to intercept, modify, or stop network traffic between devices. Understanding how ARP works and its potential weaknesses is essential for anyone looking to secure a network or perform penetration testing. The Domain Name System DNS, is another critical protocol that plays a key role in how we use the Internet. DNS is responsible for translating human-readable domain names, like www.example.com, into IP addresses that computers can understand. Without DNS, we'd have to remember the IP addresses of every website we visit, which would be both impractical and prone to errors. When you enter a domain name into your browser, your computer sends a DNS query to a DNS server, asking for the corresponding IP address. The DNS server responds with the IP address, allowing your browser to connect to the website. This process happens almost instantaneously and is essential for the smooth operation of the Internet. 
However, like other protocols, DNS is not immune to attacks. DNS spoofing, for instance, is a technique where an attacker intercepts a DNS query and responds with a fake IP address, leading the user to a malicious website instead of the intended one. Understanding DNS and its vulnerabilities is crucial for protecting against such attacks and ensuring the integrity of network communications. Once the preliminary reconnaissance is complete, hackers can move on to more advanced network attacks. Man in the middle, MyTM attacks are particularly dangerous, as they allow the hacker to intercept and manipulate communication between two parties without their knowledge. In a MITM attack, the hacker positions themselves between the victim and the server, capturing sensitive information like login credentials or injecting malicious code into the data stream. Denial of Service DOS, and Distributed Denial of Service DDoS, attacks are other common methods used to disrupt network operations. By overwhelming a target with traffic, these attacks can render a network or service unavailable. While a DOS attack originates from a single source, a DDoS attack leverages multiple compromised devices, often part of a botnet, to flood the target from various locations, making it much harder to defend against. Packet sniffing is another technique used in advanced network attacks. Tools like Wireshark enable hackers to capture and analyze packets traveling across a network, providing valuable information about the data being transmitted. This can include everything from unencrypted passwords to private communications, which can then be used to further compromise the network. While much of the focus in hacking revolves around exploiting vulnerabilities, ethical hackers play a vital role in defending networks from these very threats. Ethical hacking involves using the same tools and techniques as malicious hackers, but with the goal of identifying and fixing security flaws before they can be exploited. Penetration testing is a key component of ethical hacking, where professionals simulate real-world attacks to assess the security of a network. By identifying weaknesses in network configurations, firewall settings, and encryption protocols, ethical hackers can help organizations strengthen their defenses and protect sensitive data from unauthorized access. In addition to penetration testing, ethical hackers often provide recommendations for improving network security. This can include implementing stronger encryption standards, regularly updating software to patch known vulnerabilities, and educating employees about phishing attacks and other common threats. The field of networking is constantly evolving, with new technologies and protocols emerging all the time. For hackers, staying updated with these trends is essential for maintaining their skills and adapting to new challenges. This includes understanding emerging technologies like software-defined networking, SDN, which allows for more flexible and dynamic network configurations, but also introduces new security risks. The rise of 5G networks, for example, promises faster and more reliable connections, but it also presents new opportunities for hackers to exploit. Understanding how 5G differs from previous generations of wireless technology and the unique vulnerabilities it introduces will be crucial for hackers in the coming years. Similarly, the growing prevalence of Internet of Things, IoT devices, has expanded the attack surface for hackers. These devices, often lacking robust security measures, can be easily compromised and used as entry points into larger networks. Hackers must stay informed about the latest developments in IoT security to effectively target and exploit these devices. To wrap things up, understanding network protocols is fundamental for anyone in the field of hacking or cybersecurity. Whether it's the basics of IP addressing, the intricacies of TCP and UDP, the critical role of ARP, or the essential functions of DNS and DHCP, these protocols form the backbone of how data is transmitted across networks. By mastering these concepts, you'll be better equipped to analyze network traffic, identify potential vulnerabilities, and enhance your skills as a hacker or cybersecurity professional. Thank you for joining me in this deep dive into networking for hackers. I hope you found this video informative and that it helps you in your journey towards becoming a skilled and knowledgeable hacker. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future content. Until next time, happy hacking. Thanks for watching. 
and check out the video on the right for more content to help you develop your IT career.